Let me 
Shalom, 5th Nisan 5784, corresponding to 13th April 2024. Tazria, Hebrew word for she conceived. Reading from the Torah is taken from the book of Leviticus chapter 12, verses 5 through 8. Thus says Hashem concerning a woman who gives birth. Upon the completion of the days of her purity, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a sheep within its first year for a burnt offering, and a young dove or a turtle dove for a sin offering, to the entrance of the tent of meeting, to the Kohen. He shall offer it before Hashem and atone for her, and she becomes purified from the source of her blood. This is the law of one who gives birth to a male or to a female. But if she cannot afford a sheep, then she shall take two turtle doves or two young doves, one for a burnt offering and one for a sin offering. And the Kohen shall provide atonement for her, and she shall become purified. 
reading from the prophets as taken from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, verses 42 through 44. A man came from Baal Shalisha, and he brought to the man of God food from the first reaping, twenty loaves of barley bread, and some fresh canals in their husks. Elisha said, Give it to the people that they may eat. His servant said, How can I place this before a hundred people? But he said, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus said Hashem, Eat and leave over. He placed it before them, and they ate and left over at the word of Hashem. Positive Commandments, Numbers 99 through 105. Number 99. Women after childbirth are ritually unclean. Leviticus chapter 12, verses 2 through 5. Number 100. Anyone with a spreading skin disease is ritually unclean. Leviticus chapter 13, verses 2 and 3. Number 101. Any clothing contaminated with a spreading disease is ritually unclean. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 47 and verses 50 and 51. Number 102. A house contaminated with a spreading disease is ritually unclean. Leviticus chapter 14, verses 34 through 36 and 44. Number 103. A man having an abnormal discharge, Zab, is ritually unclean. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 2. Number 104. Anyone or anything coming in contact with semen becomes ritually unclean. Leviticus chapter 15, verses 16 through 18. Number 105. A woman with an abnormal discharge, Zaba, is ritually unclean. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 19, and verses 25 through 28. Prohibitions. Numbers 141 through 150. Number 141. Do not return a slave who has fled from his master. The Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 15. Number 142. Do not oppress or take advantage of a slave who fled from his master. The Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 16. Number 143. Do not take advantage of widows and orphans. Exodus chapter 22 verse 22. Number 144. Do not treat a brother as a false slave with no hope for redemption. Leviticus chapter 25 verse 39. Number 145. Do not sell a brother as a slave to strangers. Leviticus chapter 25 verse 42. Number 146. Do not treat a slave ruthlessly. Leviticus chapter 25 verse 43. Number 147. Do not allow a stranger to mistreat a slave. Leviticus chapter 25 verses 47 and 53. Number 148. Do not sell a maid servant to strangers. Exodus chapter 21 verse 8. Number 149. Do not deprive a wife or any female member of food, clothing, and their own shelter. Exodus 21 verse 10. Number 150. Do not sell a female captive as a forced slave. The Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 14. Interpretation. Blessing and curse are both in the hands of God. However, the function of both in our lives depend on our obedience to God. The generation of when God issues an instruction through his messengers who are his agents, how people respond to the message determine whether blessings will follow or curses. We see this when we compare the two accounts in all scripture where the instruction to leave over is recorded. First, in Exodus, when the generation of the Exodus were commanded to eat all the manna they gathered from the fields and leave over nothing overnight, but disobeyed and kept some which became infested with worms the next morning. And secondly, in Second Kings, where the disciples were commanded in similar manner to eat, but this time leave over some food. They obeyed as they were commanded, and the food was blessed in return. Who bears seeds for the worship of Hashem? Today, we read about the law of God concerning the purification rites to be performed for a woman after childbearing from the portion which says, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman conceives Tazaria and bears a male child, then she shall be unclean, Tameh, seven days. 
as at the time of her menstruation, she shall be unclean. Leviticus chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. When the Hebrew word Tazaria is related to its root word Zara, it gives its reading to mean seed-bearing. Therefore, an alternative translation of the word Tazaria could be read as she bears seed or bearing seed. When considered from the aspect of seed-bearing, the link and bold readings is revealed. For the half Torah tells us that after harvesting his produce, a particular man from a village called Baal Shalisha came to visit the prophet of God, Elisha, with fresh fruits of the seeds his field born. For the verse says, And he brought to the man of God food from the first reaping, twenty loaves of barley bread, and some fresh canals in their husks. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 42 these verses further make clear God's intention for his chosen people. Because from the creation of man, it has been his will that as we relate with him, we shall produce fruitful seeds. Hence, reproduction was among the first set of lords given unto man in the Garden of Eden. For the verse says, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. The prelude to this verse is that God, at the end of all its creation, concluded with his masterpieces. The first man, when he told them to be fruitful and multiply, the word was now fully created with days and nights, seasons and years, plants and animals, and Adam and Eve. And God set in motion his plan to fill the world he created with the seeds of the masterpiece, people, just as the verse says. For thus says the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He had established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 18. Thus, the world was Adam and Eve's inheritance to fill and sell. God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, as we see in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 28. Thus, the creation of human life is the most sublime phenomenon in the universe. By bringing it into being, man and woman become partners with God who gives a soul to their offspring. But as new life begins with two months, spiritual impurity, to show the people that the mere fact of life is not enough, Life must be a tool for the service of God. Otherwise, it is nothing, and man is commanded to fill the earth. God wants more people on earth, but for what purpose? Analysis of the purpose of God for man to fill the earth, as we see in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, would reveal that it was God's blessing for them to have children and to work the earth. This further means that the kind of fruitfulness God commands upon mankind to bear seeds in two most important aspects of his life, the family life and the professional life. The family life. This is the first area of procreation. It was God's blessing for them to have children. Simply put, God desired for Adam and Eve to have many children and for their children to have many children. This can only be obtained through childbearing. Our Torah reading gives the purification rituals that God gave for mothers following childbirth, that is, after bearing seed. Many people, including Jewish scholars, have puzzled by this, since being fruitful and multiplying is in obedience to God's commandment, and the woman bearing seed is fulfilling her God-given mitzvah, commandment. Therefore, why is she unclean after it? Not just that, there is a set of rules and rituals that must be navigated. After the period of contamination, the new mother begins her cleansing process, culminated by the bringing of an offspring. But before she brings it, she cleanses herself of the contamination, but she still may not consume sacrificial meat or teruma, because the mere absence of contamination is not yet fulfillment of man's goal. To answer these baffling questions, the sages state that human inspiration must rise higher than the elimination of the negative. It must strive for positive achievement. 
One is not cleansed until one has come to the resting place of God's presence with an offering that represents atonement for the past and dedication for the future. Therefore, the young mother must bring an offering at the end of the time stipulated by Torah before she is pronounced clean. Some rabbis trying to further explain this law say that a woman's impurity after birth relates to the trauma and fear related to birth, as well as possibly postpartum depression, which require that she remains in isolation to fully recover. For the period of isolation itself, they posit that new mothers should be given the luxury of private time of bonding with their children, away from prying eyes, as well as a time to rest on navigating the journey and responsibility of raising the child. The differences in the length of isolation between the birth of a boy child and the birth of a girl child have been explained in a variety of ways too. For instance, since Jewish boys undergo circumcision on the eighth day, the mother must recover more quickly as for the 14-day period of isolation after the birth of a female child. Rabbi Shlomo Reskin wrote in his Jerusalem Post column that everything is doubled for the birth of a girl because the process of life and death will be repeated psychologically in the child's own lifetime and within her own body. The burnt offering and the sin offering that are given following childbirth are seen as a means of transitioning from a period of isolation back into the community by first drawing close to God through the offering of sacrifices upon his altar. It is a special moment of thanksgiving that both the child and the mother survive the pain and the risk of childbirth. This important ritual reminds us that transitions are vital. As we move from one phase to the next in our lives, we should first draw close to God with thanksgiving. Regardless of the explanation that is given, one thing is clear, and that is that childbirth is one of the mysterious and enigmatic realms of creation, which begins with the conception of man's seed in the fatal body, womb of a woman. Therefore, the rabbis noted that this commandment was directed to both man and woman. That is why it is often quoted that there are three partners in conception. The Holy One, blessed be He, the Father and the Mother. The Father supplies the semen, that is the seed, out of which are formed the child's bones, the sinews, the nails, the brain, the white of the eyes. The Mother supplies semen, the red substance, out of which are formed the skin, flesh, hair, blood, and the black of the eyes. The Almighty provides the spirit, the soul, the beauty of the features, eyesight, the power of hearing, ability to speak and work, understanding and intelligence. Talmud Nieder 30a. However, the sages of the Talmudic time stressed that the command is more for the man than for the woman because the seed that is planted in the woman's womb comes from the man. The knowledge of the biblical frame of reference has given us insight into the spectrum of childbirth, which will also serve as the foundation for our understanding of the mind of God relating to the process to follow after childbirth. The relevant commandment regarding conception in the Torah is stated in the form of a blessing. For the verse says, And the Almighty blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply as we see in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Therefore, this is an important commandment because through it all other commandments in the world are fulfilled. Considering its nature, it was given to human beings and not to angels. In Judaism, the very purpose of marriage is to fulfill the commandment to procreate. Therefore, from the beginning of Jewish history to this day, women who do not conceive are given to great mental language as a result of their infertility. Our matriarch Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel, including Hannah, the mother of Samuel, exemplify the desperation of women who were infertile and were redeemed when the Almighty blessed them with a child. The failure to bear children involves more than just personal frustration. Hence, in Judaism, a person who willingly chooses not to have children is regarded as diminishing the image of the Almighty God. 
The sages thought that when even one person in the nation chooses not to fulfill the commandment of procreation, this was reason enough for the Shekinah to remove itself from the people of God, as we see in Bereshit Rabbah, chapter 34, verse 20. Indeed, the code of Jewish law states that marital relationship should not be carried out with the object of satisfying one's animal passions, but for the goal of establishing a family which should serve the Almighty and be useful for mankind. Evan Heza, chapter 25, verse 2, Shota 12. Judaism places very great emphasis on building a family that if a man died before he had a son, his widow was to marry his brother, so that her firstborn would carry the name of the deceased and thus ensure that his name be not removed from Israel. As we see in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, verses 5 and 6. Therefore, but it is not worthy to mention that the blessing of fruitfulness also denotes much more than just bearing children. Life must be a tool for the service of God. Otherwise, it is nothing. Furthermore, in the remainder of the verse of Genesis chapter 1, we see a useful insight to this fact. For the verse clearly states the purpose of God wanting mankind to multiply. For the verse says, to fill the earth and subdue it, and to have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth, as we see in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. This second part of the verse introduces the second part of our discussion, which is God's requirement for man, and that is the fruitfulness in his professional life. In other words, the fruitfulness of the labor of his hand, the professional life. The Haftarah tells of a man from the village of Baal Shalisha who came to visit Elisha, the prophet of God, and he brought along with him the fruits of his labor, which are the seeds of the works of his hands. As first fruits, for the verse says, And there came a man from Baal Shalisha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and full ears of corn in the hawks thereof. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 43 what is first fruits the word first fruit is a merger of two words which would otherwise exist independently a the word first means coming before all others anyone coming before all others anyone or anything else in order of time place sight class things etc the word first could also mean something that came from the beginning of anything b Whereas the word fruit is defined in the following terms. The produce of our labor, the results of a reward, gain, or profit, or the accomplishment of any work. The first of our harvest, that is, the first of the fruits from the ground, farm, or the first of our income from our places of work, such as our salaries, bonuses, or allowances, are also classified as first fruits according to the scripture. For the verse says, and if you offer a meat offering of your first fruits unto the Lord, you shall offer for the meat offering of your first fruits green ears of corn dried by the fire, even corn beaten out of full ears. Leviticus chapter 2 verse 14. So, the scripture teaches that the first of our every labor is a first fruit because it belongs to God. It must be separated and given to the Lord. And that is why the man from Baal Shalisha brought his first fruits of loaves of barley and full ears of corn in the husk. This produce clearly tells us what this man's profession is. He was a farmer who planted barley. Why do we have to bring the first fruits? Number one, putting God first in obedience and worship. The first act to note here is obedience followed by honor and worship to God. Offering the first fruits to God is a way of demonstrating the principle of putting him first in all things. This is the sum total of the duty of man, just as it is written. And now, Israel, what doth Hashem thy God require of thee? But to fear Hashem thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve Hashem thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep for thy good the commandments of Hashem and his statutes which I command thee this day. The Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. Jesus taught from the heart of this law when he said to the people, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
and with all your soul and with all your mind. Thus is the first and great commandment. We see that in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 37 and 38. The Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, and the Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. Bringing one's first fruits is an excellent way to worship God, the eternal King of glory. For the verse says, For in mine holy mountain, in the mountain of the heights of Israel, says the Lord God, There shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 40. Number 2. Honor to God. Prophet Malachi was inspired and he said, A son honors his father, and a servant as master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. Furthermore we read, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Again it is written, for I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 9. To the mind that still wonders how one can honor God, biblical precepts answer this question. For the verse says, Honor the Lord with your substance, and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your bonds be filled with plenty, and your presses shall burst out with new wine. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. One should make it a habit to give to God always and abundantly. Malachi was inspired, and he pronounced the promise of God in this regard, when he said, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Number three, for righteousness. It is righteousness. Whatever God commands, if we obey, it is counted unto us as righteousness. For the verse says, And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. The Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. Furthermore, we read from the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 6. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Number four, for a memorial. It is a reminder of the covenant we have with God, for the verse says, And to bring the first fruits of our ground, and the first fruits of all fruits of all trees, year by year, unto the house of the Lord. Also, the firstborn of our sons, and of our cattle, as it is reading in the law, and the firstlings of our herds, and of our flocks, to bring to the house of our God unto the priest that minister in the house of our God, and that we should bring the first fruits of our dough, and our offerings, and the fruits of all manner of trees, of wine, or of oil, unto the priests, to the chambers of the house of our God and the tithes of our ground unto the Levites, that the same Levites may have the tithe in all the cities of our tillage. And the priest, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites, when the Levites take tithes. And the Levites shall bring up the tithes of the tithes unto the house of our God, to the chambers, into the treasure house. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of corn, of the new wine and the oil, unto the chambers. Where are the vessels of the sanctuary, and the priests that minister, and the porters, and the singers? And we will not forsake the house of our God. Nehemiah chapter 10 verses 35 through 39. Emphasis on verse 38. Also, in the book of Acts, we read of how Cornelius' offering stood as a memorial before God. For the verse says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said to him, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Your prayers 
and your arms are come up for a memorial before a God. We see that in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Number 5, for our own good. The Torah teaches that God requires things from us. For the verse says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to work in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you this day for your own good. The Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, to keep up our relationship covenant with God, there are requirements that we must continually fulfill for him to be steadfast and faithful in all his promises to us. One of those sacred duties required of us by God is the payment bringing in of our first fruits at the appointed times. As we see in the book of Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 40 and Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 11. Number 6. Special blessings of prosperity were promised those who will bring their first fruits to God. The word prosperity comes from the word to prosper and means to go forward. God will bless and cause us to go forward in all our dealings when we obey as he has commanded. He will move us into greater and higher dimensions of success and enlarge our borders when we prove ourselves obedient to him. God gives blessings, not just physical blessings. He gives physical blessings abundantly to those who obey him. He also gives spiritual blessings to those who obey him, like the disciples who obeyed and did as they were commanded. For the verse says, If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with a sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. Number 7. For fulfillment of promises. Prophet Ezekiel was inspired to give us a list of unfailing promises of God, which will be ours if we are careful to bring in our fresh fruits in their seasons to the Lord our God. See Ezekiel chapter 20 verses 40 through 44. The list for the reasons why we should bring our fresh fruits and offerings before God is endless, but the key is to be guided in obedience. Therefore, Tazria, when read as seed-bearing, reveals the real purpose of God for mankind, which is for us to fill the earth and have dominion over it with our seed through the works of our hand. When considered from the aspect of seed-bearing, then we shall indeed understand the benefit of God's intention for his chosen people. For the verse says, Hashem will open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven." to give the rain of thy land in its season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. And Hashem will make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of Hashem thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 12 and 13. In conclusion, birth of any kind, childbirth or fruit bearing from the seeds of our labor signify the beginning of something beautiful. The birth of a child and the offerings and ritual of the mother's purification symbolize that birth integrates the beginning of the ongoing privilege given to man by God to raise the newborn child to a life of dedication Torah and holiness that will enable God to say to the child and his parents, you fulfill the purpose of the entire work of creation. This message is aptly understood in the Talmud statement that the world was created solely for the purpose of being fruitful and multiplying. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, God did not create it, that is the world, to be desolate. Rather, he formed it so that it should be inhabited. See Isaiah chapter 45 verse 18. God intends that we civilize the world and to make it a place fitting for divine habitation too. This is higher sense of purpose that distinguishes man from animal. Hazak, Hazak, Finik Hazak, be strong, be strong, and may we be strengthened. Shabbat Shalom. Seven blessed.
seven, seven, seven to the Almighty. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Sana. 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 And thou art worthy, Father. Only you are worthy, Father.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Hashem El Elyon, the creator and possessor of the universe, who created the heavens and the earth by the words of your mouth. We stand before your presence to extol you and glorify your name in commemoration of your works of creation. On the first day, you divided light and darkness and thus established day and night. On the second day, you separated the waters above the firmament from the waters beneath and thereby established the atmosphere and the sky. On the third day, you formed the dry land and the seas and caused the dry land to bring forth vegetations so that there should be food for man and for beasts. On the fourth day, you establish the sun, the moon, the planets, the stars, and other heavenly bodies to give light to the universe and to be used in the reckoning of times, seasons, and the appointed festivals. On the fifth day, you commanded the waters to bring forth living creatures, such as the birds of the air and all the fish and swarming water creatures. On the sixth day, you created all the beasts of the earth, the mammals, the cattle, amphibians, as well as creeping and swarming insects. Lastly, on the same sixth day, you formed man, male and female, in your own image and likeness to be the heir and ruler over the works of creation on earth. On the seventh day, you rested from your works of creation. You blessed the seventh day and hallowed it to be an everlasting memorial and a perpetual covenant so that all generations of mankind should observe it and hold a holy convocation in honor of your glorious majesty and in giving praises to your great name, O thou who inhabit the glory of Israel. We thank you immensely for granting your holy Sabbath rest to us, a people who do not deserve this glorious fellowship, but find ourselves today sharing in it. We also stand before thee to extol and exalt your great and holy name, Hashem Adonai, for your love and kindness towards your people of this generation, Israel in diaspora, whom you have gathered in this part of the world. You have granted to us life, good health, protection, and blessed us, so as to join the heavenly angelic beings, the saints in earth and all the works of your hands, in observing today's Sabbath rest. For all these, we bow ourselves before thee in worship and adoration and say, May all glory, may all honor, might and majesty, dominion and power, exaltation and goodness, may all burnt sacrifices, may all hallelujah, may all hosanna, May all Barukata Hashem, may the service of our heads and knees. May the service of our heads and knees. May the service of our heads and knees bow to you, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, now and forevermore. Great and marvelous are thy words, Father. Just and true. Mm. Oh. I need 
not sing unto Hashem. Let us blow the shofar to the rock of our salvation. Let us greet him with thanksgiving, praises, and songs. Let us kneel and bow down to him in worship. For he is our maker, a mighty God, and great is his kingdom, with dominion and power above all the universe. May it be your will, Hashem our Adonai, and the Elohim of Israel, who chose King David and his descendants after him, to sing songs of praises unto your holy name. Hearken, I mercifully beseech thee, to these psalms that I shall recite, and consider them as if King David had recited them himself. May the merit of the verses of these psalms stand in our favor. Together with the merit of their words, letters, voice, and cantillations, and together with the holy name that are formed from the initial and final letters, Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. May the merit of your righteous name bring atonement for our transgressions, iniquities, and sins. May an abundant blessing be drawn to our spirit, breath, and soul to purify us of our iniquities, to purge our sins, and to atone for our transgressions. Just as you forgave King David who recited these very same psalms before you. May we not be taken away from this world before our time before the completion of our years, assignment and purpose, so that we may have the opportunity through your will to rectify anything we may have ruined and to be at peace with you now and forevermore. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice up to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in war. our eyes unto the hills from whence cometh our help our help cometh from Hashem which made heaven and earth he will not suffer our foot to be moved he that keepeth the community of Hashem will not slumber behold he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep the Almighty is our keeper the Most High our shade upon our right hand the Sun shall not smite us by day nor the moon by night. Hashem preserve us from all evil. He shall preserve our soul. The Almighty preserve our going out and our coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And all the angels stood round about the throne with the 24 elders and all creatures fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped Hashem saying, Amen. Amen. Blessings and glory wisdom and thanksgiving and honor power and might be unto our god forever and ever amen 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 Forever, 
Kibuki Buchi Neke Kerikwe O Ihi Buki Bu Okaka Keloa Olugini Ne Noana Sopurugi Chi Neke Chiebere O Yewai Ai Gesia Blessed are you, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are the shield of Abraham, a mighty deliverer, powerful to save in every situation. You are the God all by yourself. There is no need for argument. You made the heavens and the earth. The works of your hands have assembled before you to adore you. For power and might belongs to you. You have done in our midst what no one can do. You have done in our individual lives what no man can do. You have taken away the reproach of your children. You have clothed us with a garment of victory. Hashem, who is like unto you? Who can be compared to you? Master of legions. May your name be glorified. Now and forevermore. Please draw us back unto yourself. Teach us to fear you. Teach us to love you. Teach us to stand for you. For that is our greatest delight. Now and forevermore. Grant us the spirit to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Grant us the spirit to witness for you. Grant us the spirit to bring glory to your name in all situations. Grant us the spirit to always trust in you. Grant us the spirit to be steadfast in the race of salvation, now and forevermore. Rise against everything that is risen against us. Contend with them that contend with us. Fight against them that fight against us. 
raise a standard against the enemies of your children in an instant may they be destroyed may they fall by their own evil counsel but may victory be assured unto the saints for in your name we have prayed we have gathered before you we did not come because a man invited us we came because this festival is ordained by an ordinance forever that is why we have come before you since you seal your every word with the forces of nature since you seal it with the forces of nature may it be your will eternal that you seal our blessings as long as the sun shines and the moon stays in its place and the stars and all the elements of nature stay in their places so shall our blessings come so shall you validate and endorse our blessings we shall live here with your blessings saturated with your glory hear us our father continue to give us victory in our individual lives every single soul here battling with one crisis or the other be it health related be it finance related be it marital related be it educational related whatever way that your children are battling in one challenge or the other Hashem release victory Hashem release victory Hashem clothe us with victory that when we will leave this land oh God it will be evident that these ones are overcomers. Hear me, O oh God. Let everything today go according to your will. Let the will of man never prevail. Let your will always prevail in our life, in our community, and in our land. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart find favor before you. Hashem, you are our rock, our redeemer. Only you answers prayers now and forevermore. Shalom, 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 yom Shabbat. Shalom, yom Shabbat, kelosi. Oh, Kadimaya. Please look for a neighbor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I will worship the God of Sabbath. Oh, Mary. I will worship Alpha and Omega. You know the song? I will worship the God of Sabbath. The God of Sabbath.
Shalom, our creed, the words of the covenant. From the scripture, we see that God called the nation of Israel with these faithful words. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. He further commanded them, saying, I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 2 to 3. This eternal truth was expanded through the inspiration of God upon prophet Isaiah, and he said, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no other God beside me. Isaiah 45 verse 5. This sacred declaration was handed over to Moses, the servant of God, for all Israel, for the vast seas. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Psalm 103 verse 7. By this pronouncement, God made Israel the custodian of his laws, which are also his covenants, customs and tradition, for all mankind, for the vast seas. He has revealed his word to Jacob, his principles and laws to Israel. He has not done this with any other nation. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. Psalm 147 verse 19 to 20. Apostle Paul also echoed this fact to the Romans and he said, what advantage, then, is there in being a Jew? Or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, they have been entrusted with the very words of God. Romans 3 verse 1 to 2. It is noteworthy to mention that this law, which the Lord gave to Israel, is however for all mankind. For the verse says, One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation, and also for the stranger that still joins with you, an ordinance forever in your generations. As you are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. One law and one custom shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourns with you. Numbers 15 verse 15 to 16 and 29. Exodus 12 verse 49. This same ideology and law was further affirmed by God himself while giving the laws and making the internal covenant upon Mount Sinai for the vast seas. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that stands here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. Deuteronomy 29 verse 14 to 15. Moses later emphasized, saying, The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. Deuteronomy 5 verse 3 Apostle Peter, through the inspiration of God, delivered this same speech as the promise of the Father to the first convert to Judaism on the day of Shavuot. For the verse says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Acts 2 verse 39 our God came down upon Mount Sinai and spoke unto Moses, his servant. For the verse says, Behold, I come to you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Exodus 19 verse 9. Furthermore, Nehemiah testified and said, You came down also upon Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven and gave them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments, and made known unto them your holy Shabbat and commanded them precepts, statutes and laws by the hands of Moses your servant. Nehemiah 9 verse 13 to 14 Stephen the Matthew affirmed this fact to his generation when he said, This is he that was in the church in the wilderness, with the angel which spoke to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Acts 7 verse 38 
This means that God has given these laws to his people, Israel, who in turn documented the everlasting words of God, the Torah, and the Holy Scriptures. Through the pages of the Holy Scriptures, the code of life is unraveled, and this is our creed. Through these faithful words, we shall remain on the right track to living an holy life and affirm his righteousness. For it shall be our righteousness if you observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us. Deuteronomy 6 verse 25 when Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel, he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which you shall command your children to observe to do, all the words of this law, for it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life, and through this thing you shall prolong your days in the land where you go over Jordan to possess it. Deuteronomy 32 verse 46 to 47 Apostle Paul spoke to the credit of the creed and said, as we say before, so say we now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. Galatians 1 verse 9. Our brother Jude reminded us that the gospel referred to by the very first words with which the saints were gathered at Mount Sinai and received. He further encouraged us to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Jude 3. The saints are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of the Messiah. Revelation 14 verse 12. Therefore, let no one deceive you. Matthew 24 verse 4 Because the words of God are forever settled, just as the verse says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. It is settled forever. John 1 verse 8 to 9 May God bless us with the courage to affirm his everlasting stand and eternal words to all mankind, and above all, do them, even in all our generations and lifetime. Hazak, Hazak, Venit, Hazek. Be strong, be strong, let us be strengthened. May we say the Shema, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elunin, Hashem Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Let us pray. Blessed are thou, O Hashem Adunin, King of the universe, who has given us his Torah, which is truth, and who has planted eternal life within us thereby. Blessed are thou, O Adonai, giver of the Torah, our Hashem and Adonai of our fathers. Sanctify us with thy commandment, and make thy Torah a portion. Satisfy us with thy goodness, and bring us to rejoice with thy salvation, and purify our hearts, so that we might worship thee in truth.
the declaration of our faith. Text. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare you that you may be justified. Your fathers have sinned and your teachers have transgressed me. Isaiah 43, 26 to 27. Introduction. Many people in the world are determined to worship God in truth and in spirit. But the major problem is finding the right channel to the God of the Bible in order to render our worship to him alone in truth and in spirit. To resolve this, we must ultimately look into the nature of God, his attributes and divine principles, which are recorded in the Torah and given to all humanity in the blueprints for life. For the verse says, I gave them my decrees and made known to them laws, for the man who obeys them will live by them. Ezekiel 20, 11. Nehemiah testified and said, You came down also upon Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven and gave them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments, and made known unto them your holy Sabbath and commanded them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses your servant. Nehemiah 9, 13 to 14. This is to say that the God whom the whole world seeks to worship came down and told mankind what he considers as the true system of worship acceptable to him. For anything besides what he said becomes to us false worship system. Therefore, it is upon these principles of our faith that our rule for worship evolved based on the unadulterated, immutable, and eternal laws of God. It is also based on this fact that we make our declaration eternal in all our generations, just as the verse says. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my spirit that is upon them, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of your seed, nor out of the mouth of your seed seed, says the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Isaiah 59, 21. Amen. 1. The declaration of our faith. The God of the Torah, who is the creator of the universe, introduced himself personally as a jealous God. For the verse says, You shall not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Exodus 25 to 6. This means that his name, glory, honor, adoration, service, and worship shall never ever be transferable, for the verse says, I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Isaiah 42, 8. Furthermore, he said, For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? I will not give my glory unto another. Isaiah 48, 11. That is the nature of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, the God of the Torah. Amen. Therefore, when we find him in such a place or manner where his accolades have been transferred to any other being, either in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the waters under the earth, then he is not the one receiving the praise and worship just as the verse says, I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded you, though you have not known me. But thus says the Lord that created the heavens. God himself that formed the earth and made it. He has established it. He created it, not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Isaiah 45, 5 and 18. Emphatically, God said that he does not know of any other God for the verse says, Fear you not, neither be afraid. Have not I told you from that time and has declared it? You are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Isaiah 44, 8. Therefore, he made us his witnesses that we may proclaim same to the whole world 
For the verse says, You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Isaiah 43.10 Amen. 2. What are the accolades of God? Apostle Paul was inspired to say, In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you still need someone to teach you the elementary truth of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Hebrews 5, 12 to 14. Therefore, the accolades of God need to be distinguished as many of them have been awarded or meritorious to Jesus and the Holy Spirit through the false concept of Trinity. For instance, we erroneously refer to Jesus as the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the King of Israel, the Redeemer and Almighty. These errors come from the King James Version of the Bible, which usually render the words of Jesus in red, as they wrote in the following verses of the book of Revelation, creating massive confusion in human understanding. See Revelation 1, verse 8, 11, and 17. When Jesus is referred to as the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega, and the beginning and the end, one cannot help but ask, is he still the son of God? If yes, it is impossible for a son to have a male child before his father. If Jesus is the first, what number shall we assign to his father? People who hold on to this view simply commit treason against God. Let us see who actually owns these titles, attributes, and accolades for the verse says, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and the last, and beside me there is no God. Isaiah 44, 6. Furthermore, we read, Who has wrought and done it? Calling the generations from the beginning, I, the Lord, the first and the last, I am he. Fear not you, Jacob, and you men of Israel, for I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 41, verse 4 and 14. Therefore, it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel that is your Redeemer. For the verse says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he that formed you from the womb. I am the Lord, the maker of all things, that stretches forth the heavens alone that spread abroad the earth by myself. Isaiah 44, 24. On the subject of who is the Savior, the Lord intervened again through his revelation upon prophet Isaiah and said unequivocally, I, even I, I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Isaiah 43, 11. Furthermore, we read, Verily, you are God that hide yourself. O God of Israel, the Savior. Isaiah 45, 15. It is not worthy to mention that Jesus was sent by God to do his will. For the verse says, I came down from heaven not to do mine will, but the will of him that sent me. John 6, 38. Furthermore, we read, I know him, for I am from him, and he has sent me. John 7, 29. Jesus further explained to us, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his master, neither he that he sends greater than he that sent him. John 13, 16. In the face of this fact, how can anyone then refer to Jesus as Almighty? Who is he greater than? Since he declared himself, saying, For my Father is greater than I. John 14, 28. 3. Who is the Lord? Prophet Elijah settled this case with the prophet of Baal as regards who is the Lord for the verse says, And you shall call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. 
and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. 1 Kings 18, 24. Then he called the strength of God in the form of fire to consume the burnt sacrifice for the verses. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. And I have done all these according to your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. First Kings 18, 36 to 39. It is beyond imagination that this sacred title of God, the Lord, is today transferred to the idols of Trinity. However, this was brought to bear upon the people through the confusions that exist in Christendom, where the sacred title, the Lord, has been allocated to the gods they created through their concept of Trinity. It is not worthy to mention that the answer to the question, who is the Lord, can clearly be seen in the heart of the law. For the verse says, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 20, 1-3. Furthermore, we read, I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Isaiah 42, 8. Therefore, it is clear that Christianity, through their theological philosophies, ideologies, and vain deceits, which they fashioned after the rudiments, precepts, and traditions of men, brought in their false belief of three gods in one, known as Trinity, and allocated to them the exclusive accolades of God, which is contrary to the commandments of God in the Torah, which says, You shall have no other gods beside me. Exodus 23. Therefore, the community of Hashem worldwide has no other Lord but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who said upon Mount Sinai, I am the Lord your God. Amen. 4. The bone of contention. The bone of contention is evident when one compares the worship systems between our Jewish community and the Christian community. It is very obvious that the Christian community disregards this unique nature of God founded in his principles and attributes his accolades unto Jesus and the Holy Spirit and act which is contrary to the scripture, particularly where God states, Unto you it was shown that you might know that the Lord, he is God. There is none else beside him. Know you therefore this day, and consider it in your hearts, that the Lord, he is God in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. Deuteronomy 4, 35 and 39. Moses said to the people, Unto you it was shown. This is evidence that why others only heard. Our ancestors saw, heard, and experienced the presence of the only one of God. Just as the verse says, And he said unto Moses, Come un unto the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship you afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come near, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses took the book of the covenant, and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved walk of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand, 
and they saw God and did eat and drink. Exodus 24, 1 to 2, 7, 10 to 11. Generations later, Nehemiah would testify to this fact for the verse says, You came down also upon Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven and gave them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments, and made known unto them your holy Sabbath, and commanded them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses your servant. Nehemiah 9, 13 to 14. Even in the New Testament era, Stephen the Messiah would also testify to this fact, saying, This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spoke to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Acts 7, 38. This is why prophet Isaiah was inspired and he said, You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Isaiah 43, 10. Therefore, the transference of God's name, glory, titles, and attributes, otherwise known as his accolades to any other being, is incomprehensible, absurd, and unacceptable to our Jewish faith. Because God is the supreme ruler, and there is none else besides him. He is not co-equal with any other being. For the verse says, Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Isaiah 45, 21. Furthermore, we read, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. Fear you not, neither be afraid. Have not I told you from that time, and has declared it, you are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Isaiah 44, 6 and 8. On this declaration we stand. 5. The controversy. Controversy occurs when the truth is turned upside down. The eternal truth remains that... There is only one God, and there is none else beside him. And unto him alone shall all praises, adoration, and worship be rendered. Baruch Hashem. Amen. However, this eternal truth has been controverted through some of the writings found in the New Testament of the Bible. For instance, from the book of Philippians we read, At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Philippians 2, 10 to 11. Jesus himself took time to teach us what error is. For he said, You do err, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. Do you not therefore err, because you do not know the scripture, neither the power of God. Matthew 22, 29, and Mark 12, 24. The lack of knowledge of the scripture has led Christianity to this error, which was brought upon them by translation of the Bible as it went from Hebrew, the original text, to Greek, further to Latin, and eventually to English. Going forward, let us compare the above error found in Philippians 2, 10 to 11 to the following truth from the scripture, for the verse says, I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Isaiah 45, 23. Apostle Paul unequivocally confirmed this truth to the Romans when he said, For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Romans 14, 11. Furthermore, we read, You shall fear the Lord your God and serve him and swear by his name. Deuteronomy 6, 13. To buttress this fact, 
Apostle Paul put it this way. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Hebrews 6.13 The truth is evident, and it states that unto God every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear. This forms the basis of our faith in the community of Hashem worldwide, as we affirm, we shall have no other gods besides him. Amen. 6. What is the name of the Lord God? Moses was the person who encountered the Lord at the burning bush. See Exodus 3. And the Lord sent him on a mission to Pharaoh for the rescue of the children of Israel. At the end of their conversation, he asked a very vital question saying, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Exodus 3, 13 to 14. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob told Moses that he has a personal name and that his name is I am in brief. It is noteworthy to mention that the word translated to us in English gave us I am. But the original was said to Moses in Hebrew, and it is yod He vav He in abbreviation. This is the closest we are allowed to pronounce the holy name of God. And it simply spells out the alphabets that represent the primary name translated as I am. This is how he puts it. Thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Exodus 3, 15. Furthermore, he said, I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. Exodus 6, 3. The reason why it was rendered as Jehovah was because of translation, because the letter J does not exist in the Hebrew alphabet. Rather, Y, pronounced as Yod, does exist in its place. Hence, the abbreviation which would have been according to translation, Jehovah, is rightly yod Hey vav Hey. 7. The Prohibition even though God told Moses his primary name, he quickly prohibited his frivolous use for the verse says, You shall not use the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Exodus 27. Furthermore, we read, Neither shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19.12 The name of God is a definite article and refers to the particular name which he revealed unto Moses and at the same time prohibited its frivolous and unauthorized use. Sequel to this prohibition, the Lord placed a curse on anyone who will violate this law of prohibition regarding his holy name. For the verse says, If you will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will make your plagues wonderful and the plagues of your seed, even great plagues and long continuance and sore sicknesses and long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon you all the diseases of Egypt, which you were afraid of, and they shall cleave unto you. Also, every sicknesses and every plagues, which is not written in this book of the law, them will the Lord bring upon you until you are destroyed. Deuteronomy 28, 58 to 61. People who argue against this prohibition do so blindly and out of ignorance by quoting the inspiration of God upon prophet Isaiah, which states, Therefore my people shall know my name. Isaiah 52, 6. Recall that Moses requested for the name of the Almighty and he told him, 
He did so because he wanted to teach the people the name of their father in heaven. See Exodus 3, 13 to 14. Therefore, it is the right of a child to know the name of his father for the purpose of identity. However, the prohibition still exists that the child can never, in any circumstance, address his father in his primary names. Rather, may use his accolades as a mark of respect and a great sign of good training. If understood this way, the inspiration of God upon prophet Isaiah does not in any way contradict the law as the people shall be taught the name of their father, but prohibited from its frivolous and unauthorized use. It is based on this prohibition that the sages of Israel built fences around the holy name of God to enable the people avoid the plague of God. They looked at all the accolades which are titles and attributes for which our God is known, such as Zivaot, Zikenu, Elohim, Adonai, El Elohi Israel, El Elyon, El Gibor, El Olam, El Roy, El Shaddai, Eloheinu, Hoshenu, El Yire, El Mekadishkem, El Nisi, El Rohi, El Rafikar, El Shabaoth, El Shalom, El Shema, among several others, and created a compound name, Hashem, which literally means the name and refers to all the names for which our Heavenly Father is known. Therefore, Hashem is an acronym of the Hebrew language, which meaning can be seen as stated below. H stands for higher, meaning living to exist. A stands for Adolam, meaning everlasting. Sh stands for Shema, meaning presence. E stands for Eloah, meaning adorable God. M stands for Melech, meaning king. Therefore, whenever you hear the name, which is in the Hebrew language, acronym Hashem, know that the person is talking about Haya, Adolam, Shema, Eloah, Melech, which means the living, everlasting, present, most adorable king. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This has become our anthem in the community of Hashem. Amen. 8. God does things for his name's sake. One of the major errors of Christianity is that their doctrine teaches that God does not act except the name of Jesus is invoked and commanded upon him. This brought to bear the need for them to end all their prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. This is an error which stems from two things. Firstly, not knowing the scripture and secondly, not knowing the power of God. See Matthew 22, 29, Mark 12, 24. God is the supreme sovereign and he does things based on his principles. The principle of God regarding his actions, be it in answering prayers, forgiving sins, favoring his people or defending them, is for his name's sake. God taught Moses this everlasting principle when he went to plead for the sin of the golden calf, which the children of Israel committed in the wilderness, just as the verses say. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, these people have seen a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sins, but if you not, blot me, I pray you, out of the book which you have written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Exodus 32, 31 to 33. The principle that Moses learned from his conversation with God on Mount Sinai is that God can never be commanded nor forced into doing anything that is not his will. Later, when Moses had learned this principle, he rephrased his prayer and said, Now therefore... I pray you, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, that I may found grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. Exodus 33, 12 to 13. God does things for his name's sake, or better still, if it be his will. This is why Jesus, in teaching them how to pray, emphasized on the point, saying, your will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 10. It is noteworthy to mention how Jesus himself prayed at Gethsemane, for he said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass away. Notice that he ended his prayers by submitting to the will of God when he said, Not what I will, but what you will. Matthew 26, 39 and 42. Mark 14, 35 to 36. Luke 22, 42. The community of Hashem worldwide adopts the inspiration of God upon Balaam, which states, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Numbers 23, 19. Therefore, our God is sovereign and acts always based on his sovereignty and for his namesake. Amen. 9. How should our prayers be rendered? Let it be known to all men that our generation was not the first people to pray to God. The scripture abounds with prayers said by so many people before us. For instance, King David was inspired to pray on numerous occasions and he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalms 23, 1 to 3. Furthermore, he prayed, For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Psalm 25, 11. Again, he prayed, For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Psalm 31, 3. Moreover, he prayed, Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of your name, and deliver us, and purge away our sins for your name's sake. Psalm 79, 9. Once again, he prayed, Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. Psalm 106, 8. Moreover, he prayed, but do you for me, O God, my Lord, for your name's sake, because your mercy is good, deliver you me. Psalm 109, 21. Again, he prayed, Quicken me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. Psalm 143, 11. Amen. The prophets equally echoed the same principle of God stating unequivocally that God acts for his name's sake. For the verse says, For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. 1 Samuel 12, 22. Further to this we read, For my name's sake will I defame my anger, and for my praise will I refrain for you, that I cut you not off. For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it? For how should my name be polluted? I will not give my glory unto another. Isaiah 48, 9 and 11. Again we read, Do not abhor us for your name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of your glory. Remember, break not your covenant with us. Jeremiah 14, 21. Moreover, we read, but for the sake of my name, I did what would keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. Ezekiel 20, 14. Once again we read, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathens where you went. Ezekiel 36, 22. Furthermore, the book of the writings also echoed this same principle during the dedication of the temple in Jerusalem when King Solomon was inspired and he prayed. For the verse says, Moreover, concerning the stranger, which is not of your people Israel, but is come from a far country for your name's sake, and your mighty hand, and your stretched out arm, if they come and pray in this house, 
then hear you from heaven, even from your dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calls to you for, that all the people of the earth may know your name and fear you as do your people Israel, and may know that this house which I have built is called by your name. Recall that this house was a request by King David, which the Lord God transferred the responsibility to his son, King Solomon, for the verse says, Behold, I propose to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord spoke unto David my father, saying, Your son, whom I shall set upon your throne in your room, he shall build a house unto my name. 1 Kings 5, 5. Since the house of Hashem is built unto his name, we must be circumspect not to mention the names of any other gods in his house, just as the verse says, In all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of any other gods, neither let it be heard out of your mouth. Exodus 23, 13. Amen. From the New Testament, we read about the same principles. For the verse says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. 1 John 2, 12. Since we know this truth, the truth has set us free from giving the glory of God unto other gods for the things he has done for us. Therefore, glory you in his holy name. Let the hearts of them rejoice that seek the Lord. First Chronicles 16, 10. Amen. 10. Did God authorize us to call upon him through any other name? The answer to this question is capital no. God did not create through the Torah, nor through the revelation of the prophets, any other name for mankind to call upon him. Prophet Jeremiah was inspired and he said, Thus says the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Jeremiah 33, 2 to 3. Furthermore, Prophet Jewel was inspired and he said, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call up the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be the deliverance as the Lord has said, and in the remnants whom the Lord shall call. Joel 2.32, see Acts 2.21, Romans 10.13. King David tried this channel of communication with God and he said, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplication, because he has inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech you, deliver my soul. Psalm 116, 1-2 to and 4. God commanded his people saying, You shall call upon me and go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. Jeremiah 29, 12. Therefore, it is only the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, blessed be his name, that can answer prayers. Amen. 11. How can we call upon God? As said earlier, the inspiration of God upon prophet Jeremiah states, Thus says the Lord, call upon me and I will answer you. Jeremiah 33, 3. The scripture makes it clear that we have direct access to the Almighty. When we call on his name, he hears us. We can bring our supplication directly to God by acknowledging his supremacy and humbly asking for his will to be done. Since we know the scripture, let us not be deceived by the errors and mistranslations. God alone is Lord, and he alone is worthy of all praises, honor, and glory. Amen. Based on this inspiration, Jesus taught his followers how to pray. For he said, After this manner, therefore pray you, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. It is not worthy to mention that Jesus is not the father, just as the verse says. Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. John 20, 17. Therefore, Jesus taught us to pray to our father and our God, who is equally his father and his God. Hence, prayers and supplications shall not be made to and through any other being except to the Father in heaven, who is our God. Amen. Moreover, this form of prayer has been the way the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has been called upon throughout the ages. Our forefathers and the sages have from old prayed in like manner, offering their prayers in total submission to God. This acknowledges the fact that God's supremacy and holy name will be recognized eternally by all mankind. Our sages further acknowledge that this asserts our faith in the ultimate dominion of God. As we daily affirm this prayer, originally known as the Kaddish, which was later taught by Jesus as the Lord's Prayer, in reference to God Almighty, who actually is the Lord. As we pray, we speak to God directly as our Father, and we conclude our conversations with him with the sacred word, Selah, Amen, which both words originate from the root word, Emunah, as the ultimate expression of submission of one's will by faith to God. And it translates, it is settled, so be it. On this platform, one submits his supplication to God in the manner which states, Father, if it be your will, and concludes with, Father, your will settles my plea, which in contemporary sense translates to, your will be done, O Lord. Amen. Conclusion. David advised, saying, And you, Solomon, my son, know you the God of your father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For Hashem searches all hearts and understands all the imaginations of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. First Chronicles 28, 9. The purpose of his advice emphasizes the need for one to search for the knowledge of the God of his fathers. After heeding to the advice of, of David his father, Solomon found out that God is unchangeable when it comes to the covenants he has made. For the verse says, O God of Israel, there is no God like you in the heaven nor in the earth, which keeps covenants and shows mercy unto your servants that walk before you with all their hearts. See Second Chronicles 6, 14. The word covenant refers to every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, just as the verse says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write down these words, for after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Exodus 34, 27. Therefore, whatever God says, he keeps in all generations. No word of God shall return to him unfulfilled. See Isaiah 55, 11. It is through his words, which he has graciously granted unto us in the Torah, that we can know him and cleanse our ways by taking heed unto every word which proceeded out of his mouth, that we may live. See Deuteronomy 8, 3, Matthew 4, 4, and Luke 4, 4. For the word of God is our life. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. 
With my lips, I declare all the judgments of your mouth. Psalm 119, 12 to 13. One, I firmly believe that the creator, blessed be his name, is the creator and ruler of all created beings and that he alone has made, does make, and ever will make all things. Amen. Two, I firmly believe that the creator, blessed be his name, is one, that there is no oneness in any form like he is, and that he alone was, is, and ever will be our God. Amen. Three, I firmly believe that the creator, blessed be his name, is not corporeal, that no bodily accidents apply to him, and that there exists nothing whatever that resembles him. Amen. Four, I firmly believe that the Creator, blessed be his name, was the first and will be the last. Amen. Five, I firmly believe that the Creator, blessed be his name, is the only one to whom it is proper to address our prayers and that we must not pray to anyone else. Amen. Six, I firmly believe that all the words of the prophets are true. Amen. Seven, I firmly believe that the prophecy of Moses, our teacher, may he rest in peace, was true, and that he was the chief of the prophets, both of those who preceded and of those that followed him. Amen. Eight, I firmly believe that the whole Torah which we now possess is the same which was given to Moses, our teacher, may he rest in peace. Amen. Nine, I firmly believe that this Torah will not be changed and that there will be no other Torah given by the Creator. Blessed be his name. Amen. 10. I firmly believe that the Creator, blessed be his name, knows all the actions and thoughts of human beings as it is written. It is he who fashions the hearts of them all, he who notes all their deeds. Amen. 11. I firmly believe that the Creator, blessed be his name, rewards those who keep his commands and punishes those who transgress his commands. Amen. 12. I firmly believe in the coming of the Messiah, and although he may tarry, I daily wait for his coming. Amen. 13. I firmly believe that there will be a revival of the dead at a time which will please the Creator, Blessed and exalted be his name forever and ever. Amen. May it be your will, our dear Father in heaven, to write your words upon our hearts and enable us to do them for our own good, now and forevermore. Amen.
Scriptural Purification, page 126. Yes. It's an old lecture for those who attend my lectures regularly here. And it is a useful lecture in our fight for the sanctity of the high tabernacle. We have actually started implementing general purification within our community. And this is found in the book of Second Chronicles 30, 2 to 3. 2 to 3. And we are going to read it together. We are going to read it together. Page 126, General Purification, Issues of Our Faith. The opening text is Second Chronicles 30. I would love for everybody to read this. Even if you don't have it, you may have your Bible or something. Let us take. We always lift the authority from the Word of God, then we move on. For the verse says, please, ladies and gentlemen, for the, for the king, king had taken counsel, and, and his princes, and, princes, and all the congregation in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, to keep the Passover in the, in the second, second month. For they, they could not keep it at that time, because the, the priests priest had not sanctified, sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither they had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Now, in my usual slow pace, to make sure that it sinks in, there, are, there is a word that bothered me here. And that word, I wish it said it in the way I understood it, but it did not. It would have been better if he said that the priests were defiled. Okay, come on, almost not seen and didn't try at Rocha. But he didn't say they were Man, defiled. Also, the Rocha. Because they were not defiled. But he said that they had not sufficiently sanctified themselves. It's worrisome. And when this can occur to the teachers of the law, the priests, what about you and I who are still worshipping God in tremendous levels of ignorance? The priests know what to do and be defiled and what to do to be clean. People go to them for cleansing, true or false. But here, it says that the are sanctified, but not sufficiently. Let us see what that area means. And he mentioned again that the people did not gather themselves in Jerusalem. For those of you that want to know much about that section, look at John 11:55. John is Talks about something. Let's let's read that area before we move forward. Please in the name of Hashem. John eleven verse fifty five. I read, and the Jews Passover was nigh at hand. The Jews Passover was nigh at hand. Our own has come. The same thing. And many went out of the country. Up many came out of countries up to Jerusalem. Up to Jerusalem before the Passover. And they came before the Passover. To purify themselves. The purpose why they came before is to purify themselves. If you match these two, make sure you write John 11, yes. John 11, 55. 55. 
to purify themselves. Notice, not only will our people not come for Passover, but the first day convocation, they will just stand on the main road, wear white on top of the jeans, okay. <laughs> and then walk in. Honestly, if you sincerely care about your God, it's a slap on the face. Reason is because our consciousness has not risen to the level to know that sanctification is a great mark of respect before Hashem. If you go to the book of Ezekiel 42, Ezekiel 45, 44, no, Ezekiel 42 and 44, the Lord even told the priests that the clothes with which they served in the high tabernacle, clothes, they should not wear it outside to bless the people. That they should take it off. Wash it even in the holy place. To keep the sanctity of the king. Our own, the garment with which we wash, worship God, we go to the market. We go to we go for burial. Some people say that it is evangelism. How many people they converted? We have no records. Honestly, our senselessness drove us wild. But God is merciful. Yes, so and He has been patient with us all these years. So, so far in the community we are stressing on sanctification and we thought we were on the right path until this sufficiently came in and changed the whole equation. And this is why this issue has come up. Those of you that are joining us, I've given this lecture in Nigeria joining us, join us again so that you will learn more. And it will be my last lecture of the day. I will take it slowly. At the end of the day, you will see the sense. Alright. Introduction. I hope you are with me. Yes, sir. From the above text, we note that the feast of the Lord's Passover was once suspended due to the fact that the people were lacking in sanctification. This evidently places a very important emphasis on sanctification as a prerequisite when one wants to approach Hashem. Because without holiness, one cannot see God. And those are the quotations there. In the case of the rescheduled Passover, in the days of King Hezekiah, there is a worrisome phrase that was used, and that is, the priests had not so, sorry, sanctified themselves sufficiently. This indicates that they were sanctified, nevertheless, not sufficiently. You see, that's that's a big issue. Apostle Paul once said, when you think you are standing, be careful, lest 
you fall. fall. So when we stand up and say, I'm sanctified. I am, I am not in my period. I didn't have a wet dream. I didn't touch a corpse. Mm. In blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you will see that you touched what touched and yeah. what touched and what was Stop. touching <laughs> and what touched something that touched this is where we are going this lecture is targeted at raising our consciousness in the book of John I believe it's 18.21 where they led Jesus to Pilate yes. is that John 18? Something made, made them not to enter the hall of judgment. Read it if you're there quickly. John Thank 18, verse 28. Thank you very much. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas mm -hmm. unto the hall of judgment. Caiaphas is the, form, the high priest then. They led Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. Yes. And it was early. And it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment and they hall. they that led Jesus yeah. to the hall of judgment did yeah. not what? Enter, Enter the hall. Lest they should be defiled. Lest they should be defiled. But that they might eat the Passover. Mm. Did you understand something there? Yes. If you are clean, something can defile you, true or false. True. Let me say that again so that you can follow. If you are clean, something can defile you, true or false. True. Now, these people are sure of their sanctity. And they were leading Jesus to the court, which is the hall of judgment. And the custom of the Romans is that when the judges okay. die, they are buried in the court. They are more like my in-law from Deltas. When an, a, a man from Delta dies, he must be buried in his house. Except my father-in-law, he wasn't buried in this. Because sound doctrine has come to him. Okay? You see, people are in ignorance. Until the light shines, darkness will not be dispelled. Yes, sir. Are you getting it? The Romans bury. And the same tradition runs in the Roman Catholic Church. One. When I was a student at Federal Government College, just, the Catholic bishop there in, on Plateau was called Bishop Ganaka. Bishop Ganaka, Ganaka, when he died, he was buried in the altar. Hey. When I go up on a job in a secondary school, Bishop on the Catholic and I Bishop Ganaka. Oh, go on. He was televised. Say, you know, you Dug a very big hole. Brought him in, held his uh, memorial service. Down. And, uh, for your information, he's still there. People are worshiping in that place. Okay. So when somebody says, My daughter is wedding in so so so, St. Patrick or St. Okay. Whatever, okay. come and join us. Okay. You will say you're clean. Okay. But has something touched you? Yes. yes. I don't know whether we are upon seven days. If this is difficult for today, we start tomorrow. No, Onaga. But the point I want you to see is see these traditions was what made the people of Israel at that time, even though they took Jesus to the hall of judgment, mm. they were conscious of the fact that these people do not keep our laws. Mm. So, go in. <laughs> we stand outside. Okay. We cannot come under the same roof so that they are not defiled. defiled. 
nda adu ba jizo seba mwana ndiro mne ni ozu nuno eduru ha elu esi angwa ba zia nime fomwa aboro nime kafa we ga reba na ade gocha and that is how it happened eto ago sele now when they handed him over there from there remember he left the house of the high priest mm. kayafas mm. to the hall of judgment mm. they didn't touch him again okay they didn't touch him again jesus was from henceforth handled by, by the romans mam eru ara nu ni be ndi ji we meto si aka o ndi rom na ndi amia but ndi na to si aka so that they will eat the passover ah we me ki yeri nga bi ga which the law says in exodus 12 uh, yes that a defiled person shall not eat the passover so it happened that something during the days of hezekiah i don't know what the incident was but the priest could not vouch yes for their complete sanctity nobody in care hezekiah moro me here man man and in church e nwere ike inwi na ha this watch and is okay that is what we are going to obia behind agani eh because of that they said we cannot in this state enter the holy of holies how was no no do i no ha ma ba wuni be ben so kasi e ben so cancel passover say ka bwenga be ken ka ro ha passover was cancel you we cancel why na ro ha you get one can you vouch for your sanctity ya nguru onwe gi yi ni edu ni di ocha gi zulu okay i'm not asking you to swear because by the time i finish <laughs> you will know you shouldn't even open your mouth asana ngi nwa yi maka dutu nko wasi aya e ga afu do onwe ibe gena ke nwa yi you will see many situations e ga afu onu di chi chi that you may have passed through e ga e ga fegolo that you may not even swear e ga me ni ma nwi yi and live to see the next day <laughs> that is being sufficiently sanctified. Let's continue because I don't intend to make you sad. It's uh is the kind of weight the lecture puts. We move on. All right. This indicates that they were sanctified nevertheless not sufficiently. How can this be explained? We recall that when God wanted to meet with the men of Israel. He first said to them, he said to Moses. Are you going to read with me Exodus 19:10 to 11? Yes sir. For the verse says everybody go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. And let them wash their clothes. And be ready again the third, the third day. day. For the, For the third, third day, day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Exodus 19:5 says, Moses came and said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. All right. Now let's take my imagination. Imagine that they washed their clothes opening the ask and now what fa and were ready on either the first which you can elega nya no bachin kambo or the second day mo bu no bachin kambo will they be before god ha ga de ni ruchi neke as sufficiently sanctified na eku na ha di ocha ni izu oke now god said how many days three days and they are sanctified the sanctify the first day sanctify the, the second, second day magoluwu and then they went up to the mount chine ke se na ha ga edo nsa aba na eto fa we don ke kpochi nke bu na nke ebua ila kwa di gobe na enugu will they be before hashem sufficient as sufficiently sanctified sanctified no why because every law of god has not been obeyed. God said three. Three days. I don't know what I make sense. Yes. Obu no so abani na aboka do nso, that's all aro do nso. If una he ke mezu hi wo chine ka maka chine ke se abani eto. Okay. The Lord spoke through Elisha, the prophet, unto Naaman. Chine ke gwale Elisha, oku maka Naaman. And he said, you will jump into river Jordan how many times? Seven. Seven times. O si agbe Naaman nya mo na miri. But they sang. Naaman hesitantly began jumping. Oh, where money came up? 
He jumped the first one. Bankembu. Took a good look at his body. Nene area. And decided to warn the prophet that I cannot. I don't seem to see any improvement, yeah. but. If I do this and I don't see your head will go. We are planning to go and have a go and come back when we find for. Because we are upon a matter of church is here for. Because Elisha wasn't there to hear his insults. Elisha no go back and come back on a bad day. The people said he said seven. The man is here and how are they? And he expected that with every jump, some spots will be going, but with the bubbles from the water on the. Body, mm. the sports increased. Ne man ne na ni 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 ata ban kambu onya no ba wanti ti wanti obi do baba no manakota ban kambu na kebwa onya ni na weye loge. What kind of nonsense is? Are you sure this formula will work? They say continue. Up to the sixth. Lo na kisi. Don't you think if you're taking malaria type tablets, you should be seeing some improvement before, before the full dose? From first to the second day, your temperature is direct at hundred. Go and see your doctor. Go and see your doctor. You see, there is something wrong. But when he jumped the seventh time, do you remember what happened? Everything that worried him disappeared. So God said, three days. If they did, okay, let's say they didn't do the first day. They did the second and the third. Will they be before God as sanctified? The answer is no. Let's continue. Though they were sanctified. Because most of the laws of defilement end at sunset. Which implies almost a day. But God, whom they sought to meet, specified a period in which the ritual of their sanctification must be carried out. Hence, Anything short of the word of God is deemed as not being sufficiently sanctified. Alright. Let me give some examples. There are many other reasons for which one may pick up defilement ignorantly. Let us imagine a few. Most people who travel by air may not be aware that they were in the same aircraft conveying a corpse. True or false? True. It happens many times. But there is one, when you are coming down, you see an ambulance uh, <laughs> at the peak. I the ambulance go Okay. What will you be saying? Uh, Lord, I didn't touch. Those are, but those who brought the cops, who are conveying the cops, are in the same cabin. You enter through the same door. It happens all the time. People die every day. Internationally, especially in this Igbo land, one of the greatest pride of the Igbo man is to be brought home. Oh, oh no, do him everything, but bring him back to this junkie village and bury him. He'll be very grateful. Because we appreciate the blessings of being gathered to our fathers. Mm. No Igbo man, sincere Igbo man, mm. wants to be buried outside. And what so, is so every day we are bringing people back. How do we cope with this scenario? Look at the second one. It's not limited to aircraft. Likewise, people who travel by public bus system, mostly in luxurious bus buses, may not be aware that beneath them they are in the same vehicle conveying a corpse. Oh, they have put them in before you put your coat. And your bag was next to it. 
Oh yes, I can tell you. That. <laughs> but you need Ibozu. All of them are cargo. I tell you, they be Ibu. But I came. I said, Hey, Lord, thank God. Oh, I didn't see my period this period. Mm. Therefore, I'm sanctified. Mm. Are you sufficiently sanctified? Ebe se ne ebaro ko ezimi ke na mana idolun soni zuke. It's not your fault. Yes, I know, but you're defiled. Oburo ko nsokugi eh mana idoro cha. I do not know. Yes, you're ignorant of the situation, but you are. Let's continue. Look at C. Even those who have avoided aircraft, avoided public transport system, mm. and came with their own cars. Look mm. at C. Sometimes one may be in a car uh, inside a filling station buying petrol. Mm. And an unmarked vehicle we saw one today mm -hmm. with a corpse may come in under the same cover. Ew. One has contacted seven yeah. days. Because they won't come in and say, Are there Sabbatarians here? <laughs> filling station is filling station. And where you are the pump, opposite the pump. Pump where you are and the one we fight get here come na moto abuzu. Are you going to cover it in the blood of Jesus? Igejo para Jesus we buchie. What will happen now? If you hear, okay, that one is even evident. Listen to this. Imagine that the pump was just servicing an ambulance that carried a corpse mm. and left okay. and then you came in okay. same fuel attendant, same pump yeah, 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 yeah. filled your tank pump where you were with the motor was fuel where you were with the motor was fuel you were with the motor was fuel you were with the motor was fuel and you gave them money and they gave you change and you gave them money and they gave you change and you gave them money and they gave you change and you gave them money and they 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 gave them money it's a difficult one. But this is just to give you several scenarios. Somebody said to the high priest, you ought to know me. I said yes. He said, it's too early. I said, you see, when you hear the high priest enter confinement, he's not a member of a mystic order. <laughs> He's running away. I'm going to go. I am trying to know him. He said, "I see the judge making no get. I don't need no no problem. We are all on your own system." Some people think confinement is fasting and praying and blowing air. Mm -mm. Just sanctify yourself. The air will be blown by God. <laughs> you can call me to come by flight to Lagos, Abuja now, and I will go and come back. Mm -hmm. And this is the world. Mbano, you are not. You yes, you have not done anything. Yes, but I use sufficiently. My brothers and sisters, this poses the highest question that nobody can answer. And this brings the level of our consciousness. Even where we are to know how sanctified are we? Are, are we even conscious of it at all? Because this is where I'm driving at. Because at a point we say it doesn't matter. That it doesn't matter cancel the Passover hey. in the days of Hezekiah. Let's take D. Page 128. Yes. Please, when it becomes too heavy, let me know. 
But when I wrote this lecture, I cried for myself. Honestly. Because there are many things, except the Spirit of the Lord leads you. Your conscience will never go there. Look at thee. Most often, we go to hospitals, either for medical, medical needs, either for medical need reasons. Okay. Okay. Medical needs. Or... Uh, we either use one need or reason. Can you tell me here? Okay, medical reasons, cancel need. Or to visit somebody who is sick. And there may be a corpse within the building at the time of your visit. Can you hear your message? <laughs> uh, if you have ever heard of UNTH, UNTH. University of Nigeria uh, teaching hospital, hospital. is per second. Per second. Not that they are in, ineffective. It's just that if it's your time, you go. And so are other hospitals. And they find a quiet way to package a situation. My house in Enugu has a hospital next to it. Regions Hospital. Okay. Every now and then we hear a loud cry at any time of the day. Hmm. And we know it has happened. And the people will cry and then become sober. Maybe when everything is quiet, you visited. The corpse is still in the building. That's how it happens. So these are things that will make you examine yourself. Not too long, I think uh, just before the feast. I felt reason to go and have a checkup okay. to make sure I don't have malaria. Yes. Halfway, I turned back. I said, that malaria must go in the name of Fashion. <laughs> because if I go there and there... Uh, seven, seven days. Uh, uh, seven days. That's it, oh. You see, that's how consciousness yes. has to increase. I said, malaria, hold on. <laughs> Let this piece pass by. But before, when one wasn't conscious... Yes. You see, it affects every one of us. Look at E. This E happened at one of the hospitals in Enugu. Annunciation Hospital is in Emene. Mm. Those in Enugu will know. The whole of the basement is mortuary. Mortuary. On top of it is hospital. It's a way they could manage the little land they have. That's the one we know. Others could have the same arrangement. Basement. So we are standing on a grave. Look at what it says. The basement of most big hospitals have mortuaries built underneath. And one may come in contact with seven days defilement without knowing. No. Needless to mention that we may sometimes drive or walk across graves without knowing. I think there was a wedding that was held sometime somewhere. Even the people for, forgot to alert others that there was a cup, that there was a grave. Mm. Because most people do not sanctify grave. They don't set it apart. Mm. They just leave it to be, I, 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 I don't know what to call it, bare ground. Mm. And then you went there, they put canopy and put chair for you. <laughs> yeah. How do you do this? And most, so, most of us don't know what it takes to sanctify. So that's why this issue of general sanctification came up. 
I think I've said so much. Let me not bore you. There are too many things here. What he says, and I've written it down, feel free to read, is that there is a proposition on page 130, 130, that seven days to come into the feast, everybody shall consider him or herself defiled. We usually have a whole emphasis month. Emphasis month prayers. I know we better emphasis month for three weeks. The last week, everybody is considered defiled. And the ash is sprinkled on the third day and on the seventh day. This is to solve the issue of the things we do not know. And we said there that if you know you contacted defilement, please don't wait for this. This will not cover you. Go straight and begin your purification. But this particular one is proposed to be a custom in our community three times in a year before Pesach, before Shavuot, and before Sukkot, we shall be purified for seven days. I believe those of you that heard it performed it yes. before coming to the feast. Yes, sir. Now, as we grow in this, our consciousness towards this matter will equally grow. And then we will begin to sanctify ourselves sufficiently. And be conscious on issues of defilement. My dear brothers and sisters, I will end it here. I believe we have done nobly well today. We have covered three lectures. The first lecture we covered today was the issue of ordering our steps. The second lecture was on the issue of harvest. And the third lecture is on the general sanctification. I believe I've done my best and you have heard what the Lord wants you to hear. Thank God that whatever we say in our community is written down. Jesus would say, for it is written. Then I will add, go and read. For it is written, go and read. So that you will continue to raise your consciousness. For he said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. I wish you all a happy feast of Passover. Thank you, sir. And on living bread. Thank you, sir. And above all, wish you a happy new year of months. Thank you, sir. Shalom and may God bless you. Shalom, sir.
nation extol him all people for great is his steadfast love towards us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever happy are those who dwell in thy house they are praising thee fortunate are the people whose God is our deny they are highly favored may the Lord open our lips so that our song may be pleasing to him and the meditation thereof be acceptable before his throne the lord is our rock and redeemer may he bless his people with shalom his everlasting peace
I will study. I will study my Lord, O King. I will study my Lord, O King. And I will praise your name forever and ever. And I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day, every day, I bless you. I will praise your name forever and ever. Ready? to another and shall declare thy mighty act. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous work and men shall speak of the mighty of thy treble act and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly alter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Allu gini ne ne kelegi Jehovah. Nde bere gina gosuagi. Nsapurugi kane kuo ku banyere ya. Ime komo madu mari di ke ya nile. Nsapurugi mama kaleze ya. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endures through all generations. The Lord opens all that fall, and raises up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and I give them meat in due season. Thou openest the hand, and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, holy in all his work. The Lord is nigh unto all of them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him, and he will also be here that cry and save them. The Lord preserve all of them that love him, but all the weak will be destroyed. May my just speak of the praise of the Lord, and let us spread best your name forever and ever. I will study, I will study my Lord, O King. I will study my Lord, O King. And I will praise your name forever and ever. Sanctified be God's great name throughout the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom in your lifetime and during your days and within the life of the entire house of Israel speedily and soon. May his great name be praised forever and ever to all eternity. Blessed Praised, glorified, extolled, honored, adored, and lauded be the name of the Holy One of Israel. Blessed be He beyond all the blessings, hymns, praises, and consolations that are ever spoken in the world. Amen. Our anthem. Oh, I say. Elohim Israel Adonai Adonai El Shaddai Meleka
going to make our prophetic declaration. And when we speak those words, we shall be calling those things which are not, as though they are physical, into manifestation in our lives. Adonai will not deny you this week. Nothing will stop or be withheld from you. That which has been held back will be released unto you. Your portion shall be given back to you in a double fold. Now you repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come before you and boldly proclaim that there is no other God but Hashem. Blessed be your name. You, O oh Lord, are my strength, my song, and my salvation. Because I trust in your name, you will surround me with your favor and show me exceeding kindness. Adonai, I set myself in agreement with your prophetic word for my life and declare that this is my week of prosperity. Adonai shall subdue mountains before me and lift up my head in dignity. Because of that, I will commit myself to integrity in words and in deed. I pledge to honor Hashem in all my dealings. Therefore, He shall preserve me, my ways, and plant my feet on a solid rock. By faith, I release Hashem's protection and promotion over my life and declare that the Most High shall strategically link me up with the right people according to his purposes for my life. He shall grant me spiritual insight and set me on the path of progress. El Shaddai shall open new doors for me and invite me into my high places. The portion that was set aside shall be released unto me. He shall restore that which was lost back to me and turn my life around for the better. El Aeon shall set me in my appointed place and bring me into a week of great achievement. I boldly claim this week as my week of elevation from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I receive the anointing to be the head and not the tail. I am on top and still rising. I believe it. I receive it. And it is mine. Selah. Surely, the goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of Hashem forever and ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, may it be your will to perform your word, which says, keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them, that you may prosper in all that you do. Prosper your people, O God of Israel. Bless them with the dew from heaven. Grant us the abundance of the earth. And may the blessings of our father Abraham, your friend, be upon us his children, upon our children, and upon our children's children. From today, cause be anyone and anything that causes you. Likewise from today, 
Blessed be anyone and anything that blesses you. May the eternal one, blessed is his holy name, grant you everlasting protection, steadfast mercy. May he defeat your enemies as they approach you, and may all their weapons fashioned against you never ever prosper. May God heal you of every disease and save you from every pandemic. May his blessings fall upon you, pursue and overtake you. May the Lord bless the works of your hands with his abundant favor, grace, kindness, and mercy. For in his mighty name we pray. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. 